I can weld with anything, wire, bolts, nuts. How do you think it's gonna go? I don't know, let's see how it works. There is nobody at home. They did look at me a little strange. Welcome back to more Five Tons of Fun. Today we're one step closer to watching this crab walk down the road. One step closer to the finish line. Alan gets all the rear steer components dialed in and assembled on that rear axle and we get to put it back under the truck, hopefully for the final time. Now it's time to start buttoning everything else up, put the canopy on, get it into paint, get everything looking perfect so we can crab walk down the road. But before we get started, I wanna say congratulations to Mr. Jason Law. You won the beacon. From last week's episode, you know you commented the five correct answers to what you need in case you're in an avalanche. So we'll be sending you this beautiful beacon. You know what? Since we love giving stuff away, this week, five lucky people are gonna get the new, the awesome, the Sparks Motors official Sparks Motors hoodie. If you don't win it, you can always get it yourself on the sparksmotorsofficial.com website, or you can have the most liked comment right here in the comments below. And you know what? I might even write you a little love note on it. Thanks for playing. Are you ready? As Heavy D would say, let's buckle up and get started. What's up, amigo? What's going on? Okay, you wanna know what is, what is this setup for? Yeah. So, I'm helping Alan to weld his linkage for the steering. In order to have a good weld, I built my setup with a lathe from a mill to keep it rotating while I'm thick welding that. So this is kind of the idea. I'll show you how this works. Basically, I put the linkage here, tied it, my leg. Okay, we're good there. I need a motor to rotate this. So my motor is basically my drill. You see? Slowly turns. I want it faster? I need NOS. Push the gas pedal, amigo. Gas pedal. Faster. More faster? More faster. More slower? Slower. I love off. that. So, yeah. This is my plan. Keeping rotating the same speed while I'm still welding it. This is basically what it is. How do you think it's gonna go? I don't know, we'll see how it works. <laughs> the engineer's minds are crazy. <laughs> that is incredible. I, I would've been like, how am I gonna do this? <laughs> I just would've had you turned it while I did it. <laughs> yeah. We'll see how this goes. I don't know, maybe you just start, have the wire feed the welder right there fixed on it, and then start turning it, and then turn on it, and it just goes I think so. Mmm, Alan's getting hungry. I'm a grown boy. I need my nourishment. <laughs> what do you got for lunch today, Alan? Uh, nothing. I have to go home or get something. Do you want us to get you anything? That's, that's not hinting at, Al. Well, where are you planning on going? Oh. That's why we're asking what I you was, want. It's not out there. Just uh, burgers yeah. are always good. You like Burger King burgers and fries, or like uh, Burger King ones that we had the last time they brought in, they were okay. He got like a bacon burger or something like that, and I like it with no sauce. That's the only thing, something like that, no sauce. No sauce? Yeah. So you want a bacon cheeseburger with no sauce? No, just a, well, just a bacon burger. If it's a cheeseburger, that's fine, whatever. But just no sauce. Whoa. You eat bacon burgers with no cheese? Well, I don't mind. I mean, it's like. Uh, I like real cheese, like real aged cheddar and stuff yeah. on it or, or something like that. Uh, I'm gonna go get you a bacon burger. Okay. No cheese, and no fries. sauce, and fries. Yeah. And uh, where's your drink? I don't know if they'll have cherry coke there or Pepsi. Anything. Pepsi. Yeah, Pepsi would be right. good. All right, thanks. Well, I guess it's the other socket that I have on the table, which is for that. 
It's perfectly the wrong socket. Mm, yes. It's always that last one you look at. Is it at. this one or the other one? Mm. Uh-oh. I have to get my adapter. It's in the toolbox. My toolbox bottom broke. I wasn't paying attention and uh, it basically opened up on me. I'm just fixing it old school until I can buy me a new box. I gotta... How long did you have this box? Long time. Yeah, it's been through the ring. And oxyacetylene is actually superior in some ways to the new modern welders. Because I can do stuff with the torch that you can't do with the uh, machine. I can heat up localized areas without penetration or I can penetrate or I can weld with anything, wire, bolts, nuts. Two baseball cards, a sack of marbles. <coughs> Petey. Pieces of metal that's just been left over. May not be as clean as every a lot of the well, machines. Better off. We got them basically done. Oh, just a little bit right here. And this is just uh uh, tie wire for rebar I'm welding with. Hmm. Close? I mean, there just seems to be something inside the hole that I didn't... Yeah, we'll get a little drill bit. The only thing I can think of is if I just take a little bit off. That's enough that it'll... Almost. Get the heaviest type I can get in there. Okay, got that one in. What I want to actually do now is check the adapter fittings. Which I probably should have checked before I started doing all this, but I assume they got the right part. So now we have everything that we need. So prep this face, put the ram on, and then work out our dimensions to cut the piece of pipe to weld these uh, adapters on so we'll have a steering linkage. But I think I'm going to put a little bit of primer on this thing here. All this has got to be repainted anyway, but uh, I don't like to leave the metal exposed, even for a short period of time. Iram went and welded the last of this while I was uh, working on some other parts and things that were necessary. He did an awesome job. I noticed I just got a couple little things sticking here, so I'm just going to smooth this down again and uh, see how everything matches up and mates up. Rust-Oleum primer. Think of checking the differential fluid first. Making sure it's topped off. We're gonna make the other fitting on the other side. Oh, it's nice and clean, a little low. It's good. Thing. You have to hold everything all up at once. <sighs> all right, I'll make it back to the GK lab. Oh, okay. Thank you. Hey, they did look at me a little strange when I'm like, hey, mm. I want a bacon cheeseburger without the cheese or the condiments. Mm. And he's like, so you want bacon, pickles, and a burger. Mm -hmm. Easy man to please. Easy man to please. I'll, I'll give him that. Easy man. The Burger King's burgers, I think, are getting smaller every day. That's just a hamburger. Teeny weeny little burger that barely like a small puppy uh, would be still hungry after eating. Oh, no. I just don't like this gap right here. I don't want to find out why. So what are you going to do? Take it off, flip it around, see if it fits better the other way. Might have been some dirt in there. Sixty 
65 and a half inches. 66 and a half, which means I gotta pull these in a little bit. Why do you think it's off kilter? Oh no, I'm just trying to align it up so that the ram itself is more towards the center, but I can't really tell the way these springs are. It just looks like uh, we have a little more than this on, on this side than this side, which means I lengthen this one short this one. Somehow. Well, it doesn't take much of a turn on this thing to go way off one way or the other. I uh, just need like another big wrench to tighten them really tight, but. Uh, it's uh, pretty good right now. Everything's all in there. The next thing it'd be is to just roll it up underneath the truck. Unless we want to do the, the centering system on this thing before we do that. So I've sort of got it so that the rams are about, at about the same distance out. The wheels, toe in, toe out are about the same. Just rough measurements I mean I'd have to have a machine to do any any better so I'm gonna ask Iram what we've got for the centering so what do we have yeah. for the uh, centering mm -hmm. there's got to be something that hooks to that ram or the rod or something for the uh, automatic centering uh, we have a kit at the parts room it's in the parts room yes yeah, in the parts room you know, I don't know what brand, what it looks like, what box. Uh, is Ron still in his office? Yeah, he was the one. Alright. There is nobody home. It's a dark, dank world in there. No light. So, I'll have to make a phone call. So I have to grab my phone. Now, what are you measuring back and forth here to make sure it's equal? Yeah, I saw you taking measurements on here and here. And yeah, I wanted the wheels to be completely straight with the same amount of ram, a piston length on either side and about the same amount of threads or adjustment on either side. By doing so, then when you have to adjust it a little bit, you're always, you have, always have tons of play either way. The other thing I'm working on right now is this is the basically the sensor to tell where the steering is for the self-centering. And on the bro dozer, they connect like from here to a bracket to the axle, but we have, there's like a shock absorber and stuff and Maybe I will connect, make a bracket here, and then this will have a piece of metal that comes up and loops through this. It'll just all, it'll all be right in there, but actually on this side. And all my measurements, I didn't realize this had screwed out, so I've got to uh, open this up enough to close that. But anyway, I think this ram moves too longer than this can handle. Yep. So this thing will only be able to go up to right there. That immediately knocks that out of the question. The next thing is going to the arm like on the bro dozer. I'm going to have to make something that connects from here and something that connects to here. And what are the potential flaws with that situation because of that spring being there? Well, this spring doesn't, doesn't move all that fire much, damn. It's not going to come down to hit this because uh, you got these springs here almost never bend. This has a lot more stuff in the way than the bro dozer. The bro dozer is really open. It doesn't have this spring. It's got the coil and it doesn't have any shocks here because no matter what I do, I have to, the shock is in the way right here, which means I have to connect this side. The bro dozer just uses a plate. That puts a little bit of tweakiness on this. Might have to go out and look at the Brodozer again. Uh, I mean, it's, I guess it's working on the Brodozer because the Brodozer works fine, right? But it might be that without this little bit of pivot, if it's a solid plate like what I remember seeing on there, that means that at certain times, this will this is like force there, but this will want to be tweaked 
up or down a little bit when this thing goes out and in because the distance changes. And that's what I was wondering. I gotta go look at the bro dozer again. Yeah, they're actually super close. They're really, really close. Well, these uh, linkages for determining position are shorter than I was anticipating. And looking here on the one that's installed on the bro dozer, they have it very close to the pivot point because this thing moves back and forth, but you don't want this travel to be more than this is capable of. And so that's why I see they have it so close. I mean, that's really, really close. It's only maybe three and a half inches from the pivot. But this is a little bit smaller than the one we have, so we could probably go a little farther, maybe four inches. So I'm thinking I've got to go about four inches from the pivot point. And then I tighten this all the way up until it hits the nuts. So what'd you discover from the brodozer? That hooking the linkage on is not going to be as easy as I thought it was going to be. Probably this is uh, will be the, the place to put it. I've got a bolt, two bolts right here. I got a straight shot here for a plate. And basically it looks like uh, I'm going to be mounting a plate right now. It's got to be in really close, about four inches, if I remember right. I said, probably somewhere right there. I think I can just go straight up and then bend, one bend. And then bolt that in like that. And then make just a plate that sticks up right here. Bolt that right in, right there. So I can just make a plate that just goes straight, flush with this straight up. I gotta, I'm going to do some more measurements. Since I had to readjust that linkage, I'm going to get checked up, make sure I got the wheels centered again, and then looks like I'm going to attach it right here. This is like the best area I can find. There's not, nothing around me to get in the way. I'm just going to get this uh, axle re-centered again, and then probably call it a day. They're really fabbing out a bunch of stuff quickly. the last piece to be cut right yes the very last piece that goes right here so we're done with the mounting brackets for the seats well we're waiting for a one inch square tube that's gonna go right here that's gonna hold everything together so we can bring it to the powder coating and everything will stay sturdy okay. and then after we're done painting they're going on the truck that's awesome yeah right. one step one step closer to the finished product Oh my god, yes, but there's so much more to go. Yeah, there's so much more to go, but you know, we're getting closer. So when you guys powder coat like this big of a thing, like anything extra you have to do other than just it takes a lot longer? Not when it's thin metal, but if it was stick stuff, you'd have to preheat it. But I'll just have to hang this and just... I just love seeing his drawings and then seeing the fact that they went from flat metal, just sheet metal, to cutting it out on the machine, bending it, welding it together, Seeing it take shape right in front of our eyes is my favorite part of this job. How am I going to sit on that? That's why I need the metal for tomorrow. That's why I need Just one more thing. This is so cool. Is this the front or is this the front? Hey, hey. That's stupid question. <laughs> why is that stupid? You know which way is the front. I have seen this before so I know what I'm looking at. You didn't see that before. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. No, that's, I'm why, just... that's why I'm asking. I imagine it's scooting in right here, and that lip is holding it in, and the seat is going on top here. But looking at this plan, these are supports. This is going upside down. But now I'm a little more confused with how the cooler fits. What do you mean? It'll be facing hey, the other way. I take back my comment. That's not a stupid question. I thought the question. top was the top and the bottom was the bottom. <laughs> um, okay. I'm asking these questions because I haven't seen the design up to this point and I'm just wanting to understand. So if I'm looking at this, because the only reason why I knew this was down is because the orientation here. Help me understand. This is the top, this is the bottom support. So the cooler. Provided by Pelican, a very cool cooler, by the way. Okay, the cooler is going to fit in there like that? Yep. Okay, what is this support attaching to? That's going on the bottom. 
But obviously right now it's flimsy. Yeah. Are you doing a support a... going down? No. What? No, so this is screwed down to the floor. And then you see these little tabs right here sticking out? Yeah. That's for the pedal. There's gonna be like a pedal that holds the cooler. Okay. Like it goes from here, goes around, and then screws in here too. So when the you cooler got is really in, fancy. Yeah, we like it fancy here. Then it goes up. When you release it, you press it down to slide the cooler out. I don't have those yet, but wow, I still have to cut them. Okay. Well, we're getting you the metal, so you can yeah. do that. But that's pretty cool, man. So you have a nice broad seat mount on the top. Caboose. That's bolting against the side. That's bolting against the side. Give it a lot more rigidity. This, yeah. I'm going to push down a pedal, slide my cooler in. Then when I'm ready to get it out, push the pedal down, slide it out. I'm ready to go. Except yeah. for you're going to slide it that way into the table because this is upside down right now. That's really cool. Hey, good job, guy. Thank you. Doug? Good job, guy. Turn it around. Turn it around this way? Yeah, so we're facing yeah. that. Way. There we go. This is at least 300 pounds just for everyone's. Like we were saying, look at this seat. That's it. Oh, it's not even done yet. It's going to have heated elements inside of it, right? That's what I was thinking yeah. when we got this. Like, when you feel it, how plush it is Ooh, and how comfortable it. it is. Don't push it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> like, all those angles are measured out like they need to be. Yeah. We don't need you bending them, Caleb. Yeah, I get it. Well, right now it's not strong enough for you to sit on it. Yeah. You can imagine what it'd be like. <laughs> Caleb. I know from experience, dude. You know what I mean? If I was sitting in it, I would... Grab my awesome Pelican case. Cool it. Cool it, you're right. And then I would slide it like so. And then I'd ride around, ride around, ride around, have fun. You get thirsty, right? You pull your drink. Pull that out. Get my drink, put it back in. Right, Cole? Yep. And these guys aren't drinking Kool-Aid, from what I understand. <laughs> Gatorade. This is a party. <laughs> From inception to reality. There we go. I, I love the part that Jire put the extra work in so to show that it like locks into place. Yeah. This thing's gonna be moving Instead around. Of, yeah, it's I mean, there. you're going off road and you're gonna be bouncing around, so I think that's great. Nice work. Um, Ron, can you put another order for a seat? <laughs> the Maxima needs a new seat. <laughs> <laughs> New racing seat for the sports call, car. Call any company and try to order 20 racing seats and tell them you need them in two weeks. I don't need to sit in it. Tell me Where, wherever, uh, That's a comfortable seat, right? It is a comfortable seat. I think I'm going to put it over there in my spot. It's a very nice hug. Yeah. That's what this feels like. Very like Caleb doesn't get enough hugs at home. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a nice big gentle hug. Dude, that's awesome. Basically, uh, in SolidWorks here, I know it really well enough to make flat parts, but to make bends and stuff, I have not really done much of that. And since I've like uh, gotten pretty good just on the flat plates and understanding how the program works, I've just made a bend here and that seems to be working fine. I haven't had any errors. Now I just gotta do some extrudings, extrudings uh, for a hole right here and uh, we'll be good. Then I can take it over, have it cut out and then bend it. Cool. Well, I've just cut out the new piece but now I've got to go over to the press brake and bend it. Point two, five, four. Pretty close. It's dead on. This right here goes to a box that does the auto centering for the Ram. The main thing I am worrying on is the travel. That's right on three inches. I took a educated guess that the hole would ha was real close because I had done some other measurements in the area. It does show that that will be the hole. Now, 
I do want this cable to be in a better spot, so this piece right here is going to have to move. And I will move it out. Have our whole assembly put there together. I've already done some of the major welds to hold this bracket. I have one weld left to do. When I'm done with this weld, this part is all done. And it, it took a lot of work to get the adjustments properly to get exactly three inches of travel. Also to make sure it doesn't bind here. Also to not to be able to bind there. A lot of work on that. So now I'm gonna do the last weld. And that's it. So this is all done as far as this uh, section of linkage. The end of uh, the cable though has some work. There's got to be another box mounted on the frame. And we've got to hook up the uh, linkage and get uh, basically a centering piece adjusted just right. Several days later. Well, just getting ready to uh, roll this thing under the five ton. So I just got to get a few hands to help roll it and we'll be good and then after that uh, we have to just get the uh, drive shaft to uh, go all the way back and connect to it diesel d and crease is that enough yeah that's fine yeah. Right, we can do that way good or no diesel's like two guys so okay so you need <laughs> diesel and another one you don't need me well, i can use you okay. that's always be good we somebody will hop be a hop on a forklift and then come down and we wiggle this thing around. So uh, I just walked in. All I know is Al is usually very confident in our strength. <laughs> Actually, no, I guess you are being confident because you said two, <laughs> not three. Iram said, no, nah, we better get three. So whatever we're about to do is going to be real heavy. Well, let's is it roll about this. We're going to roll <laughs> this underneath that. Oh, rolling's easy. We got that. Yeah. You got two. Well. You don't even need the fork. Well, that's what I was trying to tell him. Okay. I said I need three people, but if diesel's on there, I'll need two because you're two. My man. My man. So this side's gonna always want to drop. The drop side. <laughs> Who's driving this thing? <laughs> Migo, help us! It's so heavy! Come yeah. on, guy! Now we gotta oh. rotate it. Because so this is the back. Hay que levantarlo. Well, let's get closer. <laughs> I thought we were waiting. Just get it close. I stopped pushing because I didn't know what was going on. the stand, so we got to get that stand out there. You guys were way more concerned than you guys about anything when I walk in your office in the morning. So, uh, Like you're <laughs> <laughs> oh, my way. I do let's, back, let's back up. Back up. Okay, have them come down a little bit. Uh -huh. no. No. It's a little bit though. A little <laughs> hold it, hold it up. Up. We grab the pins. What? You don't have the pins here on? Alan! The pins! Hey Jair, you got here just in time. <laughs> yeah, we need you to put the pin in over there. <laughs> Okay, you can let go for a sec. Okay, uh, we got to back up a little bit. Okay, now I have them come down a little. I'm probably too far. Uh -huh. We're a little bit yeah, I think far back. Good. I think right there. Okay, he, good. he's got a left and right shift on that thing a little bit, so if we're close enough. Keep coming down a little more. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Yeah, you're pretty close oh, here. Hold it. Let's take a look at that. Uh, turn, put yours out that way just a little bit. Uh, have them uh, fork shift this way just a little bit. Pull it. Right there. Perfecto mundo. <laughs> mundo el Allen. Come down a little bit. Uh -huh. more. Pull it. Yeah. Get it out. Hey, I could use it. Whoa. Yeah. Got more, Allen? I need a little hammer. Put some anti-seeds on there. Let me grab them. Hello there. 
Today, in Allen's world, we're putting Axel back in board. again. Oh, down. All right, we'll talk later. <laughs> the uh, it, the springs are off a little bit, just a tiny amount. We got to pull it a little bit, and a ratchet strap's the easiest way to do it. But well, it seems like everyone steals all our ratchet straps all the time. Yeah. But Alan has a secret stash, and you what? can't come see Alan's secret stash. All right, Alan, this is the last one. Yep. Alan, Alan, Mister me, Mister me, Mister me. Uh, look. Uh, a little bit. Hold it, no. Down a little bit. Just a little down. Whoop! Whoop! Oh! Alan! 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 With his bare hands! You're an animal, Al! There. We're in! Well, it's actually looking like we're getting something done now. No. Every time I put that axle in, I feel like we're getting something done. Yeah. That's when it comes out that makes me feel the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> that looks good. It makes me feel like we're just about done. Throw some canopies on, give it a little paint sprucing, maybe a drive line. Machine gun nest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> looks good. Hey, next up, buddy. Hey, thanks Brush for helping. Like usual. See ya!